Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's all stand. You know, sometimes through the week and before the Sunday service, the, you know, you have a lot of things that happen in your life. Amen. And a lot of times we get knocked down. Amen. We get knocked down sometimes. Am I the only one? But I'm going to go back to my old ball coach and uh, I'm going to just impart something to you that I was always kind of taught. When you get knocked down, you got two choices. You get knocked down, you got two choices. You either stay down. Or you get up. And I'm here to tell you in an apostolic church, in a Pentecostal church, that if you're going to get up, you might as well get fired up. Amen. How many's fired up for the Lord today? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I can never forget what the Lord has done for me. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Let's lift our hands and love the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, we magnify you, God. I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's put our hands together. Let's magnify the Lord for just a moment more today. We praise you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, from the front to the back, from the side, left to the right. Let's make this a house of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. We worship you. We exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. I lift you up. I exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The Bible tells us, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout, and shout with the voice of triumph, and shout. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. My, it looks good in here, and it sounds good in here, and it feels good in here. It's good to be home. Good to be home. We missed everybody. Missed everybody. Good, good to see everybody here today. And so thankful to be in the house of God with you. Did have a, a great few days in Dallas. Uh, the only thing that affected us, I do think I'm traumatized by the driving and the, and the uh, traffic that's in Texas. I don't know that I will ever be the same. I, I, I think I'll be the one driving down the road about 40 miles an hour in a 55 now. It's, that's, how bad, that's how bad I am traumatized. But it's good to be home. And it's good to feel what I feel. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Good to see Pam here. Good to have Pam. Sure glad you're here. I was, I was so disappointed last week when I found out you were here and I wasn't. And, okay, well, <laughs> well, good. And, and, and good to see Jerry Lee. We've been missing him. We're glad he's here. Thank God for that. And it's good to have Evelyn. We've been missing you, Evelyn. Glad that you're here. We want to pray for Evelyn today. Evelyn is uh, facing a pretty serious surgery. Um, they're going to wait a couple weeks and kind of uh, re-examine things in her knee. And um, uh, the doctor was so... Is it all right if I tell this? Okay. The doctor... The doctor uh, examining her knee, said, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to fix this. Now, I don't know about you, but if my doctor looked at me and said that, I'd say, what good are you? Uh, he, he said he's going to have to talk to somebody else and do some research and um, all kinds of stuff to try to figure out what to do uh, for her knee. So I, but I want us to pray because I do know somebody knows what to do. So during prayer line, Leonard, we will come back to Evelyn, okay? We'll come back to her. And 
and, and pray for us. You don't have to bring her up here. We'll come back there so she don't have to walk up here. But I'm sure glad to see her in church today. In the house of the Lord. We've got two folks that are in the hospital. Sister Sowards is still in the hospital. They have had to start her on dialysis. And this, this is now going to be a continual thing. Uh, it looks like she's going to have to go at least three times a week for dialysis. And uh, she, when I called her yesterday and spoke to her, she was, a matter of fact, at that moment taking dialysis. Uh, she does have to have another surgery. Uh, they're going to have to replace a valve. And they cannot do that open heart. She is not a candidate to do it that way. So they're going to have to go up through her groin to try to do that. So we need to pray and ask God to be with Sister Sowards. They don't, they don't know when. We don't have a date on that yet. They're waiting to see how the dialysis does. So let's pray for Sister Sowards. Also, Sister Paula is in uh, Hosier Hospital. And uh, she's got a lot of things going on right now. She had COVID. She had pneumonia. Um, the, her, her sugar is off the charts. Uh, right now, and I would say that's probably due to the infection and and uh, probably some of the medication that they're giving her. But uh, she's real worried about that, and so she called last night here to the church. She called and, and said, please pray. Please have the church pray. So we want to pray for her and ask God to touch her. Sister Charlotte um, is in need of prayer. Uh, I found out yesterday that the plan is for her to move to Gallipolis with her daughter, Annette, and I think that's a good thing. I think she needs to be with someone that can help her and, and watch over her, so that's the plan. Right now, she's still in, she's still in uh, Ripley, so let's, but let's lift Charlotte up in prayer, Sister Birchfield's doing better, but we still want to continue to pray for Sister Birchfield. Uh, Sister Massey's doing better, but we want to continue to pray for her as well and, and ask the Lord to touch her. Uh, many other prayer requests. Sister Janie's dad has had a rough few days. And so uh, let's pray for Bill and ask God to touch him. How many have got needs? All across the congregation. All across. Even Tripp raised his hand. So we want, we want to pray and ask God to minister to all of those needs today in the hand of God. Do you believe God can do it? I believe God can do it. I really do. There, there's too many miracles setting in here. There's too many miracles setting in here to think that God couldn't do it. Let's pray, pray for this service, that God will direct this service today in Jesus' name. Let's pray. God, Lord, we come before you. Oh, God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the prayers you've answered. Thank you, God, for all the miracles you've done, for each miracle that's sitting on the pews of this church. God, I thank you today, and I praise you for it. But, God, I pray today as we come before you, Lord, there's a congregation full of needs today, Lord. And God, we ask you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, that you would touch and minister in this house, that, God, your hand would be upon those who have brought needs to the house of God, that, Lord, you would be able, God, today, heal the sick. Lord, minister to those, God, today that are in pain. I pray, Lord, healing from pain in their body. I ask you, God, to bring healing today. And, Lord, every other need we brought to you, God, we lay it on the altar and believe you today, God, to minister. Lord, I ask you, God, to move in this congregation. God, I, oh Lord, let this service be ordered of the Holy Ghost and directed of God. Let your hand be upon us today, God. And, Lord, you just move in a mighty way. Lord, touch every name on this prayer list. Pray for Sister Sowards. Lord, I pray for Sister Paula. God, that you would touch and heal them. God, for Sister Charlotte, Sister Birchfield. Lord, we pray. Sister Massey, 
God, we pray for Bill. Lord, we lift them up before you. Touch Susie. God, we pray. And Pam Hoffman. God, I ask you to touch Sister Duncan. All the others on the prayer list today. God, especially the lost. Especially those, God, in need of salvation. Lord, I pray in your mighty name today, God, that you would touch and minister to every one of them. God, you're able in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, by your power, Jesus. God, in your mighty name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. like to be prayed for, would you come this morning? Oh, in Jesus' name. I feel healing in this place. Oh, I feel healing in this place. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody praise him. Let's praise him right now. Oh, he knows your name. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More prayer. More prayer. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Name of Jesus, Lord, your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, in your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God. I don't know. Can I get some believers to come and help me? Some believers, come on up here and help me pray. Help me pray.
Lord, we thank you for answering prayer. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer today. God, we thank you for answering prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, for answering prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Dean, would you take this prayer request? Pray over them. Brother Britt will bring them back to you. I've got some missionary letters. You would take these real quickly. You may be seated. We have several letters. Brother and Sister Kelly to Northern Europe. Who will pray for Brother and Sister Kelly? Missionary, okay. Sister Holman, thank you. The De Temple family, Republic of Georgia and Armenia. Who will pray for them today? Brother and Sister De Temple and Georgia and Armenia. Brother Holman, thank you. Indian Ocean Islands. Brother and Sister Richardson, Madagascar, Maritas, Reunion, Sekeles, Myota, and Camaros, who will pray for these nations, these missionaries, for revival in these nations. Okay, Sister Tina, thank you. New Zealand missionaries, uh, Brandon and Molly Borders, who will pray for the Borders. Brother and Sister Castle. <laughs> I have another letter from the Kellys, who are in Northern Europe. Who will take this, Brother Pettit? Thank you. And one more letter from the Walmers, the well, uh, the Walmers in uh, Brazil and Manaus. Who will pray for Kenzie? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, no matter what happens, I know that he knows my name, amen. Praise Lord, Brother Charlie. Would you ask the Lord for the blessing and the offering and tithes? Let's all stand.
Oh, God, we magnify you, Jesus. I'm so thankful for your blood today. I'm thankful for your blood, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Sister Sauter's always said that she was my second most favorite singer. Number one had to be Sister Missy. But I can honestly tell you that I'm proud to say this right, this lady right here is now my second most favorite singer. And she's going to come and bless us today. I'm so thankful that no matter what situation you're in, and life puts us in situations, uh, we were listening, we were in the car, which is where we always are, and we were listening to a message, and they were talking about the storms that come in our life. Some are self-inflicted. Some are who you're attached to. Some are God's. What? God sent. And so any of those... It's still rough. Any of those storms that you're in, it's rough. And, you know, sometimes we think, why do we have to go through this? And what, you know, what's this about? What? But, you know, just stepping back and saying, whether I did this to myself, whether it's somebody I'm attached to, or whether this is something that God wants me to go through so he can take me someplace else in him I am going to rest in the fact that he is in charge there's nothing better than not being in charge and I am so thankful that he is in charge he orders our steps he orders our steps every single day but we have to make sure we're walking where he wants us to walk so worship with me y'all know this song it's older than dirt so sing with me my boat of life sails on the troubled sea. If ever there's a wind beneath my sail, I have a friend and he watches over me. When the breeze turns into a gale. sunshine again I know the master of the wind sometimes I soar like an eagle to the heights among the peaks my soul can be found but unexpected storms Oh, they may bring me from the heights. They may bring me low, but they cannot bring me down. And here's why. I know the master of the wind. I know the baker of the rain. Make your sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Sometimes I soar like an eagle to the heights. Among the peaks, my soul can be found. Unexpected storms. They may bring me from the heights. 
they may bring me low, I won't let them bring me down. Here's why. I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm your storm. He'll make your sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Make your sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Let Jesus calm your storm. He'll make your sun shine again. Because he's the master of the wind. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could we all stand? Let's stand. Let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. Let's honor the presence of Almighty God. Lord, we honor you, Jesus. In this house is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures evermore. Oh, in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, lo lo ma si tele men de 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 di al shabbat Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's an Old Testament occurrence in the history of Israel when Israel wasn't quite walking close enough to God. The Bible tells us that the Philistines were able to take the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. God dwelled on the Ark. And so when the Ark was taken, so was the presence of God. And I'm not going to go into all the detail of the Philistines, but the time came that they put the, put the Ark on a cart. And they sent that cart back. And David was determined to bring the ark to Jerusalem, to bring the presence of God, the ark, back where it belonged, in the temple. And he was determined to put it back where it should be. And through a series of events, that ark didn't make it back to Jerusalem, but it ended up in the house of Obed-Edom. And the Bible says while that ark was in the house of Obed-Edom, his, his family, his home was blessed. He prospered because the presence of God was in the house. He was blessed because the presence of God was in the house. We've got the presence of God right here in this place. The same presence of God that blessed the house of Obed-Edom. What you need is in this place. What you need is in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Mark chapter 4. Well, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him 
even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, saying to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm, not just a calm, there was a great calm. He said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Would you pray with me, Lord, in your name? Mm. Hallelujah. God, in your great name right now, Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, your holy anointing, God. Oh, God, your holy anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, right now, Lord, you just blanket this congregation. You blanket this room with an anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, right now, every pew, every seat, every person, God, in this place, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Would you put your hand just on your chest right now and say, Lord, do something in me today. God, in Jesus' name, do it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord, God. We praise you. We worship you, God. We magnify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God, I exalt your name. I bless your holy name, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Will you preach with me today? That always helps. Will you preach with me? This is one of my New Testament scriptures that I love to preach from. Uh, maybe one of maybe my favorite. Well, no, Acts, Acts two is probably my favorite, but this is definitely one of my favorite New Testament scriptures to preach from. I, I love it so much because it doesn't matter. I could go to any church today of any faith, of any denomination. I could go to any gathering, not even church. I could go to any place today, I could read this scripture, and somewhere in that group, that scripture is going to apply to somebody. Somebody in, the, in, the, in, in that congregation, in that meeting, in that gathering, somebody is going to be facing a storm. Somebody is going to be in the thick of a storm in their life. It may be a family storm, it may be a financial storm, it may be a, a physical health storm, it, it could be a, a job storm, anything in that congregation, somebody is going to be facing a storm in their life, somebody, and in this congregation today, I may not even know about it, but somebody's going through a storm. Amen. And the thing that makes the difference 
The thing that makes the difference in this, in this story, it's not even a parable, it's, it's a reality, it's what happened in the ministry of Jesus. It, it actually did happen. And what made the difference was that Jesus was in the boat. Jesus was in the boat. Now, if Jesus is in your boat, you've got hope. If Jesus is in your boat, you've got a lifeline. So my goal today is twofold. Number one, it's if you don't have Jesus in the boat, it's to get Jesus in the boat. I want you to get Jesus in your boat. But the second thing is twofold. The second thing I want to do today is if you've already got Jesus in, the, in your boat, I want you to realize what you got. I want you to realize that that storm, there's not a storm that has ever been or that ever will be that will outdo God. There is not a storm that can come into your life that is bigger than your God. I said your God. There's not a storm that could ever happen, that could ever come your way that God cannot handle, that God cannot speak into, that God cannot make a difference. And there's one thing I noticed when I was reading this scripture. Earlier this week I was reading this, this passage and one thing I noticed, and, and we tend to forget that in that storm... It wasn't just the boat the disciples were in. There were, there were, Bible said there were all kinds of small boats. Do you realize your storm don't just affect you? Your storm doesn't just affect you. Sometimes we forget that. We think we're the only one in the world that's going through a storm. We get so caught up in our circumstances and so caught up, we, we, we just kind of forget that there's people around us that's going through storms too. And we don't realize that sometimes when God touches our storm, God will touch their storm too. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to go to work. Bible talks in the scripture, Bible talks about reports, evil reports, false reports, good reports, uh, honest reports, and, and, and the Bible talks about the report of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 53, uh, Isaiah asked the question, that probably out of a little bit of frustration, because he, he was very frustrated with Israel, because Israel had, had walked away from God, Israel was, uh, was not worshiping God, they were not anywhere close to where they, they needed to be with God, the priests were a mess, the, 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 the temple was a mess, it, it was just a, a situation, a bad spiritual situation for Israel. And he asked the question, who hath believed the report of the Lord? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So, so we have good reports, we have false reports, we have evil reports, honest reports, and we've got a report of the Lord. What does the Lord say about it? What does the Lord say about it? And Jesus asked the question to the disciples in the middle of this storm. He said, why are you so fearful? They, they woke him up. He comes up. He says, peace be still. There is a great calm. And then he, he asked the question, why are you so fearful? What is it about this storm that caused you to lose your faith? What is it about this storm that caused you to, to forget that, that I'm on board? What is it about this storm that, that caused you to think this storm was greater than I am? What is it about this storm that you thought it could override the will of God? He had already told them the will of God. He said the will of God is for us to get in the boat and to pass to the other side. If they had just remembered what he had said, 
they would have realized this storm is not going to take us out. This, we're not going to perish in this storm. The will of God is for us to get to the other side. And because that is the will of God, that is what's going to happen. Let me tell you, you need to, if you haven't written this down before when I've said it, you need to write this down. Fear is when we focus on the problem. Faith is when we focus on God. Fear is focusing on the storm. It's focusing on the situation. It's focusing on, because when they, when they went to Jesus and they brought their report to Jesus, they said, Master, carest thou not? Now, they, they spoke their report. This was their faith. Carest thou not that we perish? They spoke out of what they believed was happening. They spoke out of what they felt was going to transpire. Not out of their faith in God. They were declaring their own destiny by saying we perish. But Matthew records it a little different. He, Matthew says when they came in they said Lord save us. Boy that's the greatest prayer I ever prayed. Lord save us. God, save us. See, the question is, are you going to believe the report of your fear or are you going to believe the report of your faith? Are you going to accept the fact that that storm is greater than your God or, or accept the thought that that storm is greater than your God? Or are you going to accept the fact that there's not a storm in this world that can overcome the power of the God that you serve? See, the prayer, the prayer was simple. Lord, save us. Lord, care us though not that we perish. Lord, save us. And the answer is the same. It doesn't matter what storm you're in. It doesn't matter what kind of storm you're going through. It doesn't care if it's a family storm or a, a, a job storm or a money storm or whatever you're facing, right, a health storm. It, it doesn't matter. The prayer's the same. Lord, save me. But, but, but the, 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 the solution's the same too. Jesus in the boat. Turning to Jesus and having faith in the power of your God. Having faith in God being able to bring you through the storm. Having faith in God being able to get you through. There arose a great storm, the Bible said. And because of the storm, they were so fearful at what they could do. Now, I look around this congregation and I know people in here that's gone through some storms. You've, say, you've faced some crazy times in your life, unbelievable circumstances that you've had to deal with, focus on, and, and, and go through. And, and, and I, I, I know a whole lot about a whole lot of the storms that you've faced, some of them health storms, some of them circumstances, some of them, some of them from your past. We've, we've got people, we've got people that sit on our pews that when they came to church, they, they were so bound they, they, they were so, so bound by what, they, what life had done to them. And they were so bound by things they had been, false things they had been taught. And so, so bound that there was no liberty in their life. And, and they came to church and, and, and they, they sat on pews and, and they listened to the preaching. And, and eventually, and some of them, it took, it took months, even years to begin to, begin to even worship God freely. Because they had a hard time getting free of that bondage, of that storm that followed them. See, some storms, there are some storms, some storms last a minute. Some storms last a few months. There are some storms we go through that last a lifetime. There's some storms we go through that, 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 that we, we just, we just got to we gotta just endure and trust God to get us through it. See, God don't, God don't speak peace to every storm. Some storms we got to go through. 
we, we, we've, got to, we've got to understand that, that God is teaching us in those storms that even in the storm, I can trust him. Amen. You know, some people think that, that storms are, are somehow the evidence that God's not pleased with them. They, they think that uh, they have to have a storm-free life. And if they have a storm-free life, then everything's good. You know what? If you got a storm-free life, I'd be wondering, what is wrong with this situation? What, what, what's, what's wrong with this? Why, 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 is, why am I not going through some kind of, some kind of testing, some kind of trial, some kind of thing in my life? that Because uh, there are some storms. Jesus took them in this storm. He, he put him in the boat. You don't think he knew the storm was coming? He absolutely knew the storm was coming. And he put him in this storm. This was a storm ordained of God. And there's some storms we got to go through that God sends us through to build our faith, to, be, to, to mature us spiritually, to help us understand that we can trust God even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the boat. Come on, there's somebody in here today, your boat's rocking. There's somebody in here today, your boat is shifting back and forth. You're trying to bail the waves out as fast as you can before your boat goes down. There's somebody in here today, I feel it in the Holy Ghost, that there's somebody in here today, there's such a storm in your life, you're not sure you're going to make it. You're not sure you can hold on. You're not sure you're going to be able to endure this one. This is a tough one. And, and you're, you're, you're not sure. I, I just feel in the Holy Ghost today that there's somebody in this place. But I've come to preach the report of the Lord. I've come to preach not the report of fear. Not the report of the enemy. Not the report of the world. But the report of victory. The report of overcoming. The report that God is going to get you through your storm. Put First uh, John. Go to First John chapter five, uh, real quick back there, guys. We're gonna start probably at verse verse four. John, First John chapter five, verse four. For whatever is born of God overcometh the world. There's your promise. Whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Verse 6. This is that came, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Verse, next verse. For there are three that bear record. In heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are, there it is. There are three that bear record in heaven. I want to preach to you the report of the Father, the report of the Word, and the report of the Holy Ghost. The report of the Father is that you've got a relationship with a loving, caring God. You've got a relationship with a God that is watching over you day and night. There is not a moment you are out of the eyes of God. There is not a moment that you, that you hide you can be hid from the eyes of the Lord. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro in the earth. And he is searching out those that seek him. And God is watching over you. You've got angels encamped about you because you've got a relationship with God. And your relationship with God is your protection. And your relationship with God and your relationship with the Father is the love of the Father, the love of Almighty God. For this we know that you love that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. You have a relationship with the Father, and because of your relationship with God, I'll never forget Patrick and Kinsey were born, and the moment they were born, Kinsey was born first. They took her over. I was, in, I was in the room. They had to do C-section. And, and Kinsey was born first. They took her over. They washed her up and, and cleaned her up. And 
checked her, counted her fingers, her toes, and all that kind of thing. And they brought her over to me, had her all wrapped up, bundled up. And I took her in my arms. And that day, my life changed. My life changed that day. I became a dad that day. I, 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 there, there was nothing. There, 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 was, there was nothing at that moment. There was nothing in, that existed around me but those two kids. Because I was so, my, my emotion, my feeling, oh, I'm, I love you too, honey. <laughs> you were kind of groggy at the moment, okay? <laughs> and, this, and that's another sermon. But I became a father. And I would never be the same after that day. Because I, those, those four kids, there is, I love my wife. I love my wife dearly and, and I would do anything for my wife. But, but there's a love that, that a father has for his children. And you mothers understand this too. There's a love you have for your kids that's, that's not comparable. And the love that God has for you because of your relationship with him, he is your father. He's the one that was standing on the porch the night that you came to the altar. He was the one that had the fatted calf ready to, to celebrate when you came and God filled you with the Holy Ghost and you were baptized in Jesus' name and the blood of Jesus was applied to your life. And that night, that night, no, that, that was a night. Yeah, they were born in Eden. That night when, that, when they were born, they were born and they became Johnstons. Nothing was going to change that. Johnstons. They, 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 they had access to everything that daddy had access to. Now, they didn't know anything about it, didn't know, didn't know how to use it. I, I, I wish they could have mowed the grass when they got home, but they couldn't. <laughs> but everything that Johnston name entailed was theirs. If mom and dad had died the next day, everything would go to them because of the name that they carried. They, that relationship, that title relationship that they had with, with myself and with Crystal. And because of that, they were entitled to it all. Let me tell you something, honey. You've got a relationship with a father. You got a relationship with God. And because of your relationship with God, you got everything that heaven has to offer. You got everything that heaven promises you. So you've got the report of the Father. You've got the report of the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God became flesh. And in his flesh, God became your redeemer. He became your savior. And when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and laid himself down and nails pierced his hands and feet and he was lifted up in the air and crucified on that cross and his blood was shed for you, that work at Calvary did everything that it needed to do to save you. There would never have to be another sacrifice. There would never have to be another moment. There would never have to be another Calvary. And the word, the report of the word is that you have been redeemed. You were on the auction block of sin and your sin separated you from God. But because of the word made flesh, because God came in the flesh, now we have forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we have redemption. We have been purchased. You're saved today because of a cross, because of a Savior, because God became flesh and gave himself on an altar of wood to redeem your salvation. So you've got the report of the word. Your salvation is bought and paid for. And you've got the word and you've got the report of the Holy Ghost. You've got the report of the Spirit where when God, after Jesus was crucified on the cross, 
Then the Bible says he and told them, go to the upper room, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. And they went to the upper room, and they ended up 50 days later, while they were in the upper room, all of a sudden, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. You've got the report of the Holy Ghost that when God fills you with His Spirit, God comes down and God is on the inside of you. The report of the Father, the report of the Word, and the report of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I need to raise my expectations. I need, to, I need to stop declaring I perish and start declaring I live. I need to stop declaring I'm sick and declare I'm healed. I need to stop declaring I'm weak and declare I'm strong. I need to stop declaring I'm struggling and declare I'm overcoming by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony. You got to raise your expectations. The expectations of the disciples said we perish. The expectations of the disciples was the storm was greater than our God. The expectation of the disciples was that, they, that God was not going to be able to get them through this. You need to raise your expectations. You need to start believing that God's going to get you through, that God's going to overcome, that God's going to help you, that God is going to speak into your storm, that God is going to hold your hand, that God's going to pick you up when you're down, that God's going to strengthen you when you're weak, that God's going to help you when you don't know what to do, that God's going to guide you even when it's dark. you got to start believing God. Raise your expectations. Start expecting God to start moving in your storm. Stand with me. Start expecting God to start moving in your storm. Expect God to step out on the boat. Start speaking in the midst of your storm. Jesus on that boat changed everything. Jesus on the boat changed everything. Who am I preaching to today? Who is it that's bailing so hard, trying to get the water out because the storm is just beating your boat side to side? Who is it? Who is it that's struggling, trying to figure out how they're going to make it through the storm? I think I'm preaching to more than one. Matter of fact, I think I'm preaching to several today. And you're, you're, you're in your storm. This isn't even one of the storms you're going into. You're in it right now. And it's a storm that's just overwhelmed you. Mm. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why don't you start making your way to the front? Let's just come as a congregation. It may, may not be you, but it may be the person beside you. It may not be you, but they're going to need somebody that's got some faith. It may not be you, but Pastor, I need some help in this one. I need some help in this storm. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly. Come on, in your storm. Somebody reach out right now. God, in your name. Whose report will you believe? 
Whose report will you believe? Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation right now. Folks, be led of the Holy Ghost. Let God use you right now. Let God use you right now. Lord, I pray over this congregation. Lord, in your name right now. God, in your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Be led of the Holy Ghost. Be led of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Ilamamandolo, lo, 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 l